well, as you can see, we got the bike running. After doing some testing and swapping some ignition parts, we got it running. It runs real good. I uh, probably need some tuning once uh, I put this bike back together for the last time and just tweak the carburetor. And um, but otherwise, it sounds sounds real good. Runs real good. And uh, now we can start tearing apart the bodywork, getting the frame stripped down so we can prep it and get ready for paint, and then we can start putting this thing back together. Well, all right, we're ready to get to the suspension. These fork seals are old and they're leaking, and we're going to change them. All right, the first thing you need to do is, before you actually take the forks out of the uh, top clamps, you need to uh, loosen up these uh, top fork caps. Um, on on newer, newer bikes, they're a lot bigger. These older bikes are a lot smaller. But the important thing is you want to get the appropriate size wrench. Uh, a lot of companies make uh, spe the special wrenches for them. Uh, you can use a standard open end and, and such, uh, or socket, just as long as it's the correct size. Do not use like an adjustable wrench, like a Crescent brand wrench on these, because you will round the corners off. Now this bike is pretty old. I've already tried using my wrenches, and I can't get them broke loose. Also, you got spring tension against these just a little bit. Um, that's why I have the uh, frame up on a block so there's no weight on it but still there's a little bit of uh, preload in here uh, plus these forks have the um, adjustable preload down in here and more about that later but uh, these ones are probably kind of corroded and just need a little bit of breaking loose now I do not necessarily recommend this in all situations but and only as a last resort. I'm going to use my impact and just, just blip it every so slightly. The hammering action should just break them loose and then I ought to be able to just twist them out. Yep, and that's it. That's all it took. But like I said, this is definitely a last resort. All right, over on the bench here, I can finish taking off the top cap. And as I unscrew it, you want to be careful because once it uh, gets close to the end it's going to kind of want to pop out of there and because uh, there's a spring back here and also usually uh, a little washer or maybe even a spacer depending on the type of forks you have and I'm going to show you something neat about these once this uh, becomes see it kind of popped out of there all right and these these forks here have uh, had little drain screws here so I could actually drain most of the oil out. Uh, most forks won't have this, uh, most modern forks, so your spring and your oil is going to want to dump out when you tip it out here. But uh, now that we've got the pieces out, I can tell you a little bit more about them. Okay, obviously here's our spring which is actually attached to our damper rod which we'll get to next. 
But here's what makes these forks a little bit different and unique. Now all forks are going to have probably a washer or a spacer that rides up on top of the spring and then that presses somewhere on the top cap. But if you look at this, uh, notice this is uh, stepped in a way and behind this plug is, what you'll notice, is a uh, slotted, uh, like a flathead screw. And what's that for is so you can twist this and see how this piston rises up. You got three positions here. And what it does is it rides on this, which then pushes on the spring. And this is screwed into the cap, which changes the preload of the spring. And look in here, you know, you have, oh, almost an inch worth of preload uh, of adjustability here in, in three positions. Now this is uh, very unique, for, especially for a bike this old, or in 1970, uh, and especially for Japanese bikes, is uh, forks not being adjustable at all. About all you could do was change the weight of the oil or go to, some, go to an aftermarket spring, which re required disassembling the uh, fork a little bit to do, where this is an adjustment of the screwdriver and you can set your preload. Okay, we're at the end, other end of the fork here and we need to take out the bolt that uh, attaches to the damper rod. The damper rod is what holds the uh, two halves of the suspension together so the inner tube does not fall out of the outer tube. And it's held in usually with a, a bolt that has an Allen head, um, an Allen head bolt. And usually it shouldn't be too tight. Okay, got the uh, bolt that holds the damper rod in. And now we can separate the two halves of the fork. Okay, if we did everything right, the two halves should just separate real easy. And there we go. Here's our damper rod. It's held in there by, by a uh, little uh, sir clip. And then there's a bushing in there. And actually this hole in here, that's part of your what's called your valving. Uh, oil flows through there as well as in here. And uh, we can now take the spring out. We can do some measurements on that, see if it's collapsed. As you can see, this is a, a uh, progressive rate spring. Uh, it's got uh, narrower coils here than it does here. And so you kind of want to remember which way this came in or out. So you might want to uh, label this for reassembly uh, later. Okay, now for those who may not be familiar, uh, a lot of people think this is the seal because this is all they see. Well, no, this is just the, uh, this is just the dust protector. And uh, this is pretty old and uh, brittle. And I'm probably going to ruin it taking it off here. But all you need to do is take a uh, screwdriver and you want to just be very careful and you'll just pry it off a lip here. And uh, sometimes you can do it with your fingers. I can see this is cracking a little. So I'm going to have to source new, new parts uh, for this, which uh, same with fork seals because that's why we're doing this job. But it just comes off here like that. And uh, yeah, that's pretty pretty toasted. I'm don't, not going to use that again. And of course, because this was leaking, there's a bunch of crap and uh, crud in here. So you want to take a little screwdriver and uh, work it around here, clean it, clean it all out. Because which, there's a, a little snap ring, and there's the end of it here. And we'll take that out, and then you can... The, the actual fork seal that seals the oil is right in here. And I can feel and even look at this. This is pretty pretty well wore out, which that's to be expected with a bike like this. But really, even on modern forks, this is basically all there is to it, to, um, to disassembling a fork for purpose of uh, replacing, say, the wiper or the fork seals if, if they're leaking really bad. Uh, you know, the only thing is, on a modern fork, you're not going to have little drain holes at, uh, at the bottom. This was something that uh, was common years and years ago. I kind of wish they'd leave them, leave them on bikes today because then it makes it easy to change uh, fork oil and such. But uh, I suppose it's a failure point. Um, you know, when you're out riding, you could hit a rock and knock one of those off and drain all your fork oil out. So there's pros and cons to it. But anyway, that's basically all there is taking apart 
uh, a conventional fork like this, but inverted forks are very similar. But the main thing is, is read your manual. Uh, it'll tell you exactly how to do all this, especially with the inverted forks. M you may have to have a special tool to hold this damper rod to be able to take this bolt out because this is up in there and if it's stuck, and you, it's just going to want to spin. Which, uh, another tip that I didn't say is you can actually, with the spring in there, put the top cap back on. Sometimes puts enough pressure on the damper rod to hold it to break this loose. But uh, usually on modern forks, these aren't stuck in there. So, uh, and I got lucky on this one that this one wasn't all corroded and stuck in there. Uh, which, probably the reason why is because this bike was actually inside and not getting rained on year after year after year. So, now we got to get our new, clean up everything, get our new parts, and we can reassemble this the exact way it went back together. Well, I hope you learned a little something about how to take apart a conventional fork on a motorcycle. As you can see, it's not too complicated. Read your manual, and it's, it's pretty easy. i got to go out, source some new uh, fork seals and wipers before I can put this back together. So, until next time, I'm the Junk Man. Like my Facebook page, check out my website, and so subscribe to this show. Three, two, one. All right, well, we're ready to take care of this suspension. Three, two, one. Well, all right, now we're... Three, two, one. Well, all right, we're ready to get to the suspension. These fork seals are old and they're leaking, and we're going to change them.